Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the very first episode of Under the Gun. If you don't know who I am, my name is John Friedberg. I'm a former MBA and startup entrepreneur turned poker pro in 2004. Since then, I've cashed for about $2 million in live and online tournaments and am lucky enough to have won one of these in 2006, which at the time was the largest non-main event tournament in World Series history. Um, in 2007, Card Player asked me to host my own video show, which I did. It was called Stacking Chips, and um, I did that for about a month during the World Series in 2007, and those episodes are actually still here on Card Player TV, so if you'd like to see any of those, feel free to search under my name, John Friedberg, and look up videos, and you should see plenty of episodes there. Anyway, that was forever ago, and over the last year or so, I've been quickly developing the urge to get back onto the airways, but only if I could have my own show, my rules, my way, no politics, and frankly, no bullshit. So after coincidentally running into one of the VPs of Card Player here in Vegas at Mandalay Bay at a Steel Panther concert, it was even more coincidental that the following week we were both planning on contacting each other to launch a new show. So thanks to UB.com, here we are now. My show, my way, my rules, my guests, no politics, no BS, and best of all, completely unscripted and uncensored. So if you think you might be offended by watching this show, don't change the channel, just turn the volume down a little bit. So with that being said, let me remind you all that everything said in this episode and every episode of Under the Gun are the views and opinions of myself, and my guests, and do not necessarily reflect any of the views or opinions of anybody at Card Player or at UB. Okay, now that that's behind us, let me talk about what I hope to accomplish in this show. I had two goals in mind when creating Under the Gun. The first goal of mine was to provide in-depth insight into the minds and lifestyles of professional poker players and other celebrities to the extent that no other poker show has ever attempted. Personally, I feel that the best way to do that will be to utilize a panel format which no other poker show has ever done. So basically, I'll be inviting on two to three guests per show from poker players to industry figureheads, even MMA fighters, psychologists, etc., all sorts of people to join me in a roundtable discussion and debate about all of the hottest controversies in poker, um, from the tables to the forums to the headlines, etc., I'll also be sneaking my camera crew out of the studio as we go on all sorts of incriminating ventures to the golf courses, to the bars, nightclubs, and maybe even the strip clubs if I get talked into it. Basically, my goal is to show you what it's like to live the dream. Well, live the poker player's dream. And my second goal for creating Under the Gun is to inspire all of you to pursue your own dreams of becoming better poker players, or whatever your dreams may be. I've been an expert poker player, strategist, and instructor for the last few years, but even the best players in the world need to constantly relearn the game and make adjustments to their own games in order to stay ahead of the competition. I had a, an amazing year in 2006. I came out, I won a bracelet. In the 07-08 season, I followed that up with three final tables at major events, only to go completely ice cold in the 08-09 season where I just ran terribly. Um, after that, I decided with the fields getting so tough and the value, or at least my perceived value in these tournaments going down, I decided to withdraw myself from the traveling tournament circuit and focus more on playing online and playing in live tournaments here in Vegas and not, on the, not traveling on the road so much and playing in a lot of these 10K events where the fields are getting such small turnouts to the point where I just didn't feel like the value was there anymore. But since the 2009 World Series, I've been working really hard on my game. I've been working with a couple of uh, mentors in both tournaments and cash games. And I'm happy to say that right now, I'm playing the best poker of my life. And here on this show, I'm inviting you to join me on a venture to prove exactly just that. In this challenge, I'll be playing in tournaments, cash games, satellites, and even sit and goes to accomplish two things. The first will obviously be to achieve the goal for each pursuit, each challenge. And secondly, I'll be sharing all of my encounters and learnings with you from each challenge along the way so you can both follow me 
and learn from it just as I'll be doing. Also in this segment I'll be bringing in other poker pros to hear their views on each of my challenges as well. My very first UB.com under the gun challenge will be for me personally to win my 2010 World Series of Poker main event seat while playing on UB.com. Um, I'll be entering satellites, I'll be entering sit and goes, step tournaments, um, I'm going to do whatever it takes to win my seat to the main event on UB. Now listen to this promotion that UB is offering and I promise you this is the most the best promotion of any of the sites are doing this year. So UB is adding five thousand dollars per person for every satellite winner that actually shows up to play in the main event. So the promotion is called show up get paid and it's exactly that. If um, let's say that a hundred people qualify for the main event on UB, okay? For each of those hundred people, oh sorry, a hundred people qualify and a hundred people show up. For each of those hundred people, UB will put up five thousand dollars per person, so five hundred thousand dollars in this case, and then those people will split that money um, whether or not they cash. So the way it works is um, 75 percent of that money goes to the people that show up and play but don't cash and then the other 25 percent of that added money goes uh, to split evenly between the people that do cash so again in this example let's say that a hundred people qualify and show up to play okay and then of those people 90 of them don't cash and 10 of them do cash so the 90 people that don't cash will each split 75% of $500,000, I don't know exactly what that is right now, and the 10% who do cash will each equally split 25% um, of that $500,000. So I think the numbers are 375,000 split between the 90 who don't cash and 125,000 split between the 10 people who do cash. Um, of course, there's going to be a lot more than 100 people that qualify on UB and uh, presumably a lot more that show up as well. Um, so that's going to be my challenge. I will be playing in satellites, um, step tournaments, which are the sit and goes, and um, you know anything else UB is offering to win my World Series seat. If you don't already have a UB account, you can go to UB.com, download the software, and make sure you use bonus code under the gun, the name of the show, under the gun, and you too can play on UB to win your seat to the 2010 main event. Tournaments start as low as 10 cents to enter. So for as little as 10 cents, you, you too can win your seat in the main event playing on UB. But make sure you use bonus code under the gun. Now winning my seat to the main event on UB is going to be my primary challenge, but I'm doing another longer term challenge that I also want to talk about. So starting right now, starting right when I leave this studio, I will be starting on a venture to win $50,000 playing small stakes, no limit hold'em games on UB. So I'll be playing primarily 1-2 and possibly even some 2-4. And over the next six months, I'm looking to win $50,000 playing just those games. Uh, I'm going to prove to the world that um, not only is it doable and possible to win $50,000, which is a lot of money, in only six months playing at small stakes, but I think the biggest challenge is the fact that I've always been a tournament player and I'm sort of in the process of learning to become a better cash game player. And um, I think a lot of tournament players would agree, at least those who have probably taken shots in cash games, um, even probably the top 10, 20 percent of tournament, online tournament players in the world I don't think would stand a chance in a lot of these cash games, even though they're small stakes games. Um, cash games play very different from tournaments, and the purpose of my of my challenge here is to learn exactly what it takes to transition from a tournament player to a cash game player, and also, of course, from being a completely inexperienced player to learn um, how to succeed in the cash games. So those are the two challenges I'll be doing from now until the World Series. I'll be looking to win my uh, main event seat on UB. Um, and then also from now throughout the next six months, I'll be on a journey to win $50,000 playing small stakes, no limit cash games on UB. 
So for my very first panel, I'm about to head over to the Bellagio to sit down with the 2009 Card Player Player of the Year, Eric Baldwin, and one of the 2010 Player of the Year current leaders, Sorel Mitzi. Both of these guys are former internet phenoms turned live pros. Um, Eric Baldwin has accumulated about $3 million in tournament winnings in his uh, recent career, and Sorel has just about $4 million in earnings and has already won four tournaments this year alone in 2010. So I'm um, really excited to sit down and talk to these guys. I'm going to ask them about the player of the year race. I'm going to ask them about um, playing tournaments as a, as a lifestyle, what it's like to be a tournament player. And I'm also going to find out from them who the, better who the better players are in poker, cash game players or tournament players. Stay tuned. Eric Baldwin, you won the uh, 2009 Player of the Year race, and Sorrell, you're currently um, first and second in the two different Player of the Year races. Um, why are there two different Player of the Year races? Um, well, I guess one of them came up with it earlier. I'm not sure who came up with it first, and then the second one, instead of uh, being a copycat and just completely copying their, their criteria, they decided to make their own. Um, but they both have, uh, like, it's a lot different, you know, both of them from, like, for example, Bluff Magazine, um, they'll, they'll have one with, or all their rating systems, it doesn't matter how many players there are, it could be two players, 30 players, whatever, everything is tracked and everything counts, and caches count as well, whereas card player, like, they have a minimum of 60 players that have to, uh, register for the tournament and caches don't count. It's usually the final tables or like or top two final final tables in, in some of the bigger events. So when you're when when you're playing and you find yourself being, you know, high up on the on the player of the year charts, do you find yourself feeling the need to play more tournaments in order to, you know, win the player of the year race? I definitely uh, second half of last year focused pretty much all of my time and energy at, at winning the card player player of the year and uh, what Sorrell was talking about the the slight differences between the two uh, they actually came into play um, the numbers have been down a little bit in tournaments so for example there was a series going on at Bellagio in October and there was also a series going on across the street at Caesars Bellagio was like 3k's and 5k's and whatnot which I would definitely prefer to play and at Caesars, they'd be having three, five hundred and one Ks. So every day I'd come over here to Bellagio and, uh, you know, scout out how many players there were going to be. And if it's a 5K that got 50 players and it's a 1K over there that got 100, you know, I, I mean, I had, I had my priorities set and I'd end up going across the street to Caesars when I much rather would have been playing here. So... There's definitely a lot of different factors that come into play. Okay. So you being, you know, one and two right now in the two different races, um, is there, uh, do you have a certain strategy for the tournaments you're going to play, or are you just going to kind of, you know, play your ass off and, and see how the year goes? I mean, I guess uh, as the year progresses, I'll see which one I'm doing better at, um, and I will make my decision which one I'll, I'll really go for. Um but for the time being, I'm actually trying to win both because that's like something that's never done been done before, and I'm, you know, that's that's the big goal. Dude, but, that would be you know, awesome. It would be awesome. Um, but you know, like if if I'm like if I go down to like 12th or something on bluff, but I'm I'm like second or third on card player, I'd probably lean more towards card player and vice versa as well. So makes sense. I'd, I'd like to win one of them, preferably. You know, ideally. Right. So you guys are two of the best tournament players in the world, obviously, with your credentials and your, you know, everything you've accomplished. A lot of people in this world struggle to play tournaments for a living, and and when you look on the forums, um, you know, some people would argue that that tournament poker is a shitty lifestyle. It's not a very good lifestyle. So, I mean, clearly you guys are doing quite well. But what are your views on? on you know tournament poker as a lifestyle and do you think do you think 90 percent of tournament players are fooling themselves by thinking that they can make it playing tournaments um i don't know if it's like 90 percent it might be it might be that like around that number i guess but 
In terms of the lifestyle, it, it really depends on how you look at it. I mean, I think that the lifestyle I live is, is very extravagant. It's cool like that I get to travel wherever I want, go wherever I want, meet new people in different countries. That's like a really cool lifestyle to have. I mean, it's, it's also like, it could be very draining though, mentally and physically as well. But, um, you know, right now is the best time of my life to do it. You know, like I'm young, I'm single, I don't have any dependents. I mean, if, if I want to travel the world and do all that sort of stuff, this is the time to do it. I don't expect to be doing it for the rest of my life. And, you know, I, I don't know what I'll be doing 10 years down the line, but right now I like what I do and I, I like the lifestyle that I live. And, I mean, nobody can, you know, I, it's, it's this versus, like, a 9-to-5 job. And, you know, I've always, I've always told myself, like, you know, I want to be independent from that. I don't want to have to, like, um, I don't want to have to work for somebody or I don't want to have to, like, um, I, I want to make my own schedule. But in a, in a sense, you actually do become sort of like a slave to the trade as well if you get too absorbed in it, where like you, you, you just, it becomes your entire life playing poker. And then it's almost as bad, it's almost the same as, as sort of having that, that routine lifestyle. So you kind of just have to like have a level head and, and you know, realize um, that it's just a temporary or, or at least like be able to balance your your poker with other parts of your life and then it's all good. Eric, do you uh, agree or disagree or have any well, other? As far as your um, talking about people that are fooling themselves with making a living playing tournament poker, um, there's definitely a substantial percentage of the regular tournament players that just aren't going to make enough money in the long run, but that's why they make backers that make bad decisions <laughs> and uh, that helps the poker economy out quite a bit. Um, as far as the miserable lifestyle, I could not disagree more. Um, I just enjoy the day in, day out. Like last year, I was playing every tournament under the sun for the second half of the year, and there wasn't one day where it was tough for me to drag my ass out of bed and drive down to the strip or, you know, come down from the hotel room. I just enjoy it. Um, I think if you can separate yourself a little bit from the game and like running bad and running good and just enjoy the experience that helps a ton uh like there's always eight or nine random hilarious characters at your table and if you can appreciate just the characters and the stuff you see every day it makes it a lot more enjoyable and and uh a lot easier to go to work i totally understand i, I think the you know the the thought process comes from the fact that you know People that tend to be a little more competitive natured, I think they migrate more towards tournament poker than cash games, which cash games are very sort of anticlimactic to some extent. But, um, you know, there's a real accomplishment that we're all chasing as tournament players. And when you get a competitive person, you know, you want to win. And a lot of the times, you know, most of the times when you play in a tournament, you don't win the tournament. Mm -hmm. And you might win some money. But, I mean, if there's ever a, a really crappy time to win a million dollars, it's when you finish second <laughs> and first place was two million, right? right. I mean, so I think that's really where, where it comes from. And it's really like, you know, as you guys know and I know, it's really a lot of um, losing, or I should say lots of, like, misery and bubbles and, you know, frustrating finishes for few moments of glory. Mm -hmm. which, you know, hopefully financially you end up, you know, coming out ahead as as we all know that that's sort of the trick behind it. But uh, I just wondered if you guys, you know, if, if you look at like the WPT, um, like l prize money that's been won by everybody, um, I forget what the numbers are, but I think uh, somebody pointed out the fact that most players aren't even profitable in the WPT events. I don't think I am. I don't. I'm not in, in actual WPT events, no. But I mean, it's such a small sample size. I mean, that's true. Take a take a 10k at the World Series of Poker with a small similar field, and like, what's the difference, you know? Right. So, so I mean, that's just variance playing. That's true. Really. But um, but yeah, I mean, obviously there's tons of variance, and some people are fooling themselves. But what you were saying with the uh, competition aspect, I totally agree with. Um, it's 
there's very few people that love cash games and love tournaments. One mm-hmm. almost always gravitates That's towards true. one or the other. And tournaments just appeal to me so much. Like, I love the finish line. Like, there's a first place. I won this thing, you know? And, uh, and you can risk less money and win just an astronomical amount. So that really appeals to me. Yeah, same here. I, I, I'm the same way. I just... I, I, I've always had the very competitive nature and to like be the last person left in a tournament and have like all the chips is just like really appealing <laughs> to me. So um, I'm on that boat as well for sure. So, excuse me, <clears throat> a lot of people, um, you know, you'll see in the forums where there's constant arguments on who, you know, what players are better, the, you know, cash game players or tournament players. Who do you guys think are better at poker? Or do you even think that's a fair question? I think it, it. I mean, I'm not sure if it's a fair question. I think um, cash game players are better at cash games, and tournament players are better at tournaments. <laughs> yeah. uh, to make it very simple, but you know, there's obviously, you know, a handful of players that are, are really good at both and excel in both. Um, but you know, it's it's hard to say. Like, what what makes a better poker player is is a better poker player somebody who's uh, gonna be making the best decision every time, or is it somebody who practices really good bankroll management and makes a consistent living? Um, you know, it, it's hard to like measure that criteria. I, I read all the, all the, you know these posts you're talking about all the time. It's like some of the stuff people say is like really ridiculous. Like. Um, but in reality, I'd probably say that there's like maybe 20, maybe 15 to 20 poker players, like t- tournament poker players specifically, that are just way above everyone else. And then like maybe maybe um, the top 20 to 100 are like really good. But uh, it's really hard to say this guy is like the number one tournament player ever because it's just... You're exploiting, I mean, if you take somebody who's, like, if you take Phil Ivey um, versus a really good, like, a really good online tournament player who's adjusted well live, you know, other than the the presence aspect, because Ivey, I mean, his presence accounts for, like, a lot of his skill level, in my opinion, Mm -hmm. because I've played with him before, and he is one intimidating guy. Like, he is actually the only guy that I'm really intimidated when he, like, stares me down. Um, But fundamentally speaking like you know what who understands the game more just tournament poker i'm talking about specifically uh, you know i don't think the edge is going to be that big um versus someone like ivy or someone like eric baldwin over here <laughs> yeah i think it really comes down to what you define poker as if you're saying you know who's the better poker player like sorrel said cash game guys are going to be better at cash games tournament guys are going to be better at tournaments and in a deep stacked event like a like a WPT main event, um, there might be a little shift. Like the cash game guys might have a bit more of an edge early and be making some better multi street plays. And but then when it gets late, there's a lot of those guys that are making some pretty pretty big mistakes um, that are that are apparent to anybody that's uh, played online tournaments for a while. So, I mean. As with anything in poker, you know, it's player dependent and, and situation dependent. So you're, you're definitely not going to get a black and white answer to that question. All right. Well, thank you very much, guys, for coming out here tonight. Uh, it's been great to hear your insight. Uh, really cool stuff. So best of luck in the Thanks player so. of the year race. And thank you. Eric, thank you too. Have a great year. To be the next Eric Baldwin, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks we, for having us on. We all have to have our dreams, right? Exactly. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of Under the Gun. This is a weekly show, so keep your eyes peeled for our next episode right here on Card Player TV next week. And two things. First of all, I really want to hear your questions and comments, so please email me here at underthegun at cardplayer.com. And secondly, follow me on Twitter at John Friedberg, and that's the at sign John Friedberg, J-O-N-F-R-I-E-D-B-E-R-G for your chance to win a free poker training session with me. Thanks again. You guys have a great day, and I'll see you next week.